Welcome to part one of double bass for electric bassists. In this series I'll be giving you some tips on how to transition from electric bass guitar to the double bass. The upright bass, the dog house, whatever you want to call it. There are some inherent stumble blocks to this transition due to the fact that there are a couple of very strong similarities. The same amount of strings, tuned the same, you can simply pluck it and it will produce sound. However, the string span is much longer on the double bass. The strings are at a different angle to your body and the action is typically higher than on the average electric bass. These elements demand quite a few adjustments in technique, both in the fingering as well as the plucking hand for the instrument to sound its best. It's very tempting once you get your hands on a double bass to just sit down and shred, you know, Play what you already know, because all the fingerings work, kind of. This is maybe not the best way to approach it. So, I'm going to do this step by step. We're going to take one element at a time and hopefully transition you safely into the acoustic world of the double bass. So, who am I? I'm not a famous bass player. I'm just a guy from Norway who's played bass guitar and double bass most of my life. So. I figured I'd introduce myself properly, tell a little bit about my career, etc. But I'm not really into name dropping, so I'll just shuffle quickly through it. Now that we got that out of the way, that wasn't so bad. Congratulations on an excellent choice. This might just happen to be your best move ever as a bass player. There's a shortage of players who are equally at home on the double bass and the bass guitar in a variety of styles, so your potential as a musician will skyrocket. You open up opportunities such as theater shows, TV gigs, events, gigs that require doubling. You have to play double bass and electric bass on a lot of those gigs and it's required that you have high proficiency on both. And there are quite many gigs like that out there, if you're interested in that kind of thing. If you also decide to get a bow, practice and get good with it, even more opportunities arise. It will do wonders for your intonation and your general technique. And if you get it up to classical levels, you could get gigs with you know, subbing with symphony orchestras, chamber music, that kind of thing. There's a whole other market there. You would even get the chance to learn the dark art of playing with conductors. <laughs> These mysterious people who wave sticks at you in totally random places and presumably out of time, ahead or behind the music or whatever. But if you're in there, you'll figure out the codes and how things work. A doubler who masters the art of playing with a conductor is very rare and in demand. Be that person. You'll become a much better bass guitarist when you study the double bass. Your knowledge of the fingerboard will practically explode. This alone is worth the price of admission. Double bass is mostly played in the first positions before traveling up the neck on the top string. It's rare to play across all strings in the higher positions. On the bass guitar, we tend to learn a set of fingerings that we move around. We can't really do that on the double bass. We have to really learn the positions, the notes, what you have under your fingers. On the bass guitar, we're often taught to avoid open strings. This is completely opposite on the double bass. Open strings are your best friend. They can help with intonation, position shifts, and they are an integral part of the instrument's sound and signature in rhythmic music. Through elements, that we'll discover in part four of this series. If you've been playing bass guitar for some time, you'll already have a good grasp of the instrument's role in music. Hopefully, you'll also be familiar with basic harmony and improvisation. This makes the transition so much easier than if we were to start totally from scratch. Many things transfer between the instruments and typical double bass techniques often work great on bass guitar, as well as the other way around. I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to take some time. You're going to be frustrated because you're so fluent on the bass guitar and now you're back to square one. You're starting over again with a new set of technique. Everything feels different. It's tough on the fingers, you might develop blisters on different places of your fingers, but 
Hang in there, don't give up. It's more than worth the trouble. Just remember to view the instruments as two completely separate entities, which they are, and respect the differences. One is not more valuable than the other. They both need to be taken seriously. Soon enough, you'll be able to transfer your knowledge from one to the other. And that's where the real fun starts, when you can play your Jocko licks on the double bass or your newfound double bass techniques on bass guitar. That's when it gets really interesting. But let's start with some basic fundamentals. Remember, fundamentals begin with the word fun. And if you don't have the fundamentals in place, double bass is no fun. If you're in the market for your first double bass, bring an experienced friend along. He or she can help you assess the structural integrity of the instrument. Don't pay too much attention now to how the instrument is set up, the string height, string type, etc. The most unplayable bass out there could be the best instrument simply needing some love. An experienced double bassist will know what to look for beyond the current playability. Instead, look for bad open cracks. You don't want to have a crack in the scroll around the tuning machines. Any open areas around where the neck joins the body or along the bass bar, which is an underlying bar of wood running across the long length of the inside of the top. You don't want a warped bridge or unrepaired cracks around the end pin. All these things can of course be fixed by a skilled violin maker, but then you need to factor in the cost of this when you consider your budget. A crack that involves any removal of the top of the base gets very expensive fast. You should factor in the cost of a basic setup and a fresh set of strings in your initial purchase. Double bass strings are surprisingly more expensive than bass guitar strings, so remember to factor this in. Make some phone calls to your local violin maker and ask about the price for these things. Ask for a bridge and sound post adjustment as well as a fingerboard dressing. I recommend you do this before starting any form of serious practicing on the bass. You don't want the instrument to fight against you more than it does naturally, so you want it to be playable. Countless dreams of playing the double bass have been shattered by unplayable instruments. You know, you come from bass guitar, it's easy to move around the instrument, then you get on this thing and it's like, ah, you can barely press the strings down. It hurts in every finger, the action is killingly high, and some well-meaning person comes along and tells you, just leave it as it is, work through it, you'll get strong. No, 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 no. Get it set up properly. I suggest a medium setup. Talk to the luthier when you're getting it done. Tell him or her that you'll be playing pizzicato jazz, rhythmic music on it, and would like medium string height for that kind of playing. He or she will know how to set it up for you. You don't want the action too low. You don't want it too high. Basically, a low action gives longer sustain and less attack. It gets more into fretless bass guitar territory if you go for very low string. Higher action will get you more attack, less sustain, you know, more in the direction of older jazz record, thumpy kind of sounds. A medium setup lets you get something of both. You get the attack and still have some sustain. My setup now is medium, and, has, and as you can hear, there's a balance between the attack and the sustain. But these things are, are a personal and aesthetic choice. Once you've been playing for a while, you'll start to get a better idea of where you want to go with your setup. You can always go back and get things adjusted one way or the other. If you can, get an adjustable bridge. It's very nice to have, as seasons change throughout the year. The double bass is a large chunk of wood and reacts quite a lot to changes in humidity and temperature. It's good to be able to make small corrections to the action without having to get the bridge physically altered every time. I suggest starting out on a standard set of string. 
something like Tomastic Spirochorus or Bacantos, Pirostro, Eva Pirazzi, or Daddario Helicor. There will be other strings that out there that fit the description, just kind of regular modern strings. I would avoid starting out on the more specialized strings, such as pure gut strings or the tape one strings for rockabilly slap, etc. These are very specialized strings that often demand specialized techniques to get to sound right. So to start out, just go for a normal steel spun type string. You'll also want to get a pickup for your bass. There are many options here. Your style of playing will often dictate which one to get. If you end up wanting the singing long sustain, some pickups will work better than others. And the same goes for if you want to go the more thumpy direction. A couple of candidates that aren't too expensive and don't require modifications to the instrument are the Fishman Full Circle, if you have an adjustable bridge. This replaces the bridge adjusters. Fishman also have the BP100 that easily clips on to the top of the bridge just under the strings. David Gage, the realist, is also a good candidate that come in a couple of flavors. The lifeline, like the full circle, requires an adjustable bridge as it mounts beneath the bridge adjuster on one side. The copper head, on the other hand, works with any bridge as it installs under one of its feet sandwiched between the bridge and the body of the base. Be aware that most pickups require a buffer preamp, even though the manufacturer might tell you it doesn't. It will still make a sound without, but you'll get a much better sound if the signal is buffered correctly. Look for a video on my channel coming soon about this topic. That concludes part one of double bass for electric bassists. I hope you got some good info out of this, and in the next part we'll get into some playing. I'll see you there.